Hi, this is Andy with wristadvisor.com, and today we have another special hands-on watch review for you guys. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Breitling Navitimer B01 Chronograph 46. This is a very special watch by Breitling. It is the most iconic watch by Breitling, in, in my opinion. Uh, there's really not much that looks like this out on the market, and, and they've really made this whole look their own and made it um, a true instrument for pilots uh, worldwide. So we're gonna take this off the, the pillow of the uh, of the box. Uh, I wanna thank the guys at Moyer for letting us get hands-on with this watch. I mean, this is truly an amazing timepiece. This is the first time I've ever really got up and close with the Navitimer and just experiencing it for the last couple hours. It is very evident why this watch has been so popular over the years and why there's been no real reason to change the design of this watch. Which kind of brings me into my next point. Breitling in general has been going through some transformations, some changes in their collection, and it's very refreshing uh, to get a little bit of a different look from Breitling. Uh, you know, we don't quite know what things are gonna look like in five years with them, but we do know that the Navitimer is going to be left unchanged. And thank goodness they did. This is, like I said before, an iconic classic. You know, when you think of Omega, you think um, the Moonwatch. When you think of Breitling, you think Navitimer. When you say Submariner, I mean Rolex, you think Submariner. This is just what you think of when you say Breitling. And uh, like I said, after getting hands-on with this for a couple hours, I totally know why. So what I want to do is I want to put this on the wrist because I know a lot of you guys love this uh, this channel because I give you uh, wrist shots of some of your favorite watches. So as you can see, just putting this on, great, great, great presence on the wrist. Uh, you know, this is a 46 millimeter. To be honest, it doesn't really wear like a 46 millimeter. Uh, I had to actually look up the specs on this one more time just to double check what I had because uh, it was really hard to believe. And you know, one of the reasons why I'm saying that is today I also got the the new Super Chronomat 44, and that feels much larger than this Navitimer 46. So uh, I think that'll be one of the, the next reviews to drop. So uh, if you like what we're doing here and if you want to see that video, um, subscribe to the channel, like this video. I mean, we love... Uh, all the, the feedback and engagement that we get from, from our viewers. It really does help us get more hands-on with watches like this. And, you know, I really hope that you guys appreciate uh, the videos that we do. You know, as we can as you can see, this channel is not about me uh, like a lot of other uh, watch content channels. And that's okay for some people. Um, you know, I want to keep the content, uh, you know, directly to, I mean, directly for, uh, our viewers wanting to learn more about watches and I want to get hands on with them. I don't just want to talk about them. I want to show you what they look like on the wrist and just give you an enthusiast opinion on, uh, you know, what I see with these watches. Um, so again, like the channel, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, enough of that already. Uh, let's get into some of the specs on this watch and then we'll talk about some of the complications as well. So this has the in-house Breitling B01 manufacturer movement. So sorry I wasn't able to take out the sticker on this uh, since this is uh, considered new inventory. Uh, but what you can see, and the sticker's not going to hide it, is that the, the finishing on this movement is, uh, it's not, you know, the best that, you know, from some of the watches we've seen on this channel, but that's okay. I mean, if you really want a, a highly finished movement, um, it's usually something that you have to pay for. Breitling. This is uh, all about being a technical instrument. But for this, this is a self-winding mechanical power reserve 70 hours. And one thing that I learned today uh, when I was uh, talking to the sales associate, Derek, over at Moyer, is uh, the, the subdials in the 369 indicate that this is an in-house Breitling movement. Any other chronograph that does not have the 369 um, subdial means that it's a movement that's been outsourced. So I thought that was a fun fact today that I'd be able to share with you guys. Um, the chronograph on this is a, a quarter second, 30 minute, 12 hour uh, feature. Be able to uh, start that for you guys right here. Now, 
Uh, I will have to say, and it's something that I haven't felt on a lot of chronographs, and and I'm not surprised because this is one of the most high end ones. Is the to start the chronograph feature from the zero position? Actually, t I mean, so I'll push in slightly, and I now I have to give it a hard push. So this is not going to accidentally fire on you guys when you wear your wrist. I mean, wear it on your wrist. I know that I've worn chronographs before in the past. You look down, and all of a sudden it started, uh, and you just you know you're like, I never pushed that. You're never going to get that with this watch. Now to be able to stop it, very easy to apply pressure. Um, you know, it's you're it's going to be able to stop, pinpoint where you need it to, to reset. Very easy function. So what you're going to see, and I know the Navit timer, the dial's really busy. This bezel will turn bi-directional. Uh, there's a, it's a slide rule. It's for pilot, pilots to navigate. Uh, a lot of different things um, for, for fuel distance. Um, as you can see on the inside right here, we have a tachometer. So we can stop right here and we would have gotten 750 units in that time span, um, five seconds um, from when we started. So it helps pilots measure distance, speed. Uh, so you can see we have the date function right there and the, sub, um, the, um, the background on the date wheel matches the dial, which is very, very nice. And we have the white sub dial. So overall this reference, I mean, it's just, it's just a true beauty to look at. Uh, another one that was really interesting that I had the option uh, to take home between the black or the blue. Now, if you've watched the channel a lot, we've done a lot of uh, wrist reviews for blue watches. So I wanted to kind of just switch it up on you guys for a little bit, give you something in black. Now, let's just go over some other specs of the watch. Um, we have a stainless steel case, uh, water resistance, uh, three bars. Uh, we've been over the bi-directional slide rule bezel. Uh, the crown is not a screw down crown. You pull, you can, uh, you can just time by pulling it out, but you can also manually wind it by just twisting it. So if you want to give it, uh, some quick juice, just, uh, spin that crown and, uh, we have a case thickness of 14 and a half millimeters. So as you can see, it's uh, you know, it's definitely a watch that has a presence on the wrist, but it's not overly big like some other 46 millimeter watches that uh, that are on the market today. Um, as far as the weight goes, the weight's not that bad. I mean, we have the leather strap, which which keeps the weight down. But I think we're taking a look at approximately uh, 120 grams on that. Uh, now to talk about the uh, the leather strap. So this is very 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 comfortable. Breitling's known for making high quality leather straps. Um, most notably, the padding is the the big difference in this. Uh, you know I've seen some Breitling watches uh, on the pre owned market, and it's impressive to me how the um, the leather strap stays in such good condition for such a long time. And if you guys have owned Breitling watches with leather with leather straps, and if you have the same experience, let me know. Or if not, you know, make a comment below. You know, this is just um, my impression from what I've I've had this obviously for not that long, and what I've seen uh, on the pre-owned market. Uh, we got a lug to lug of uh, twenty millimeters right here. We have a Tang buckle. Now. There's two things that I want to talk about with this watch um, before the review's over of things that Breitling can improve on. Uh, the first one is the buckle. This releases with almost zero effort. Very, 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 very minimal effort. Uh, something that would make me very hesitant. In fact, I wouldn't buy this watch with this buckle being as is. It... Uh, it just it just feels like it comes off way too easy. I mean, we've all, I mean, we're not climbing mountains in this thing, so we're not expecting, you know, a Rolex Explorer type type uh, buckle. But for a watch that costs uh, nine thousand dollars, you know, I would expect Breitling to to do a little bit better with this. Um, the other thing to critique, and this has nothing to do with the watch, but it has to do with the presentation. 
Um, they've changed the boxes. I mean, it's not, I mean, I'm not a big box guy, but I know a lot of you guys are. The presentation on this is uh, very subpar for delivering uh, a nine, $10,000 watch. And I don't think this box is just un unique to the Navitimer because I have the exact same one right now uh, to my right for the Super Chronograph, I mean, Super Chronomat 44. So it's something that the Breitling's done. Now I understand shipping worldwide is difficult. This will unfold and it'll be flat so they can get their dealer's boxes. But, you know, there's some things that with luxury you just should not compromise on. I think presentation and first impression is one of those. Um, so guys, I want to end the video in the video, um, by just thanking you for, for watching these, uh, liking them, subscribing to the channel. Uh, we are getting close to a thousand subscribers and, you know, I know it's not as many as a lot of other YouTube content creators and it's maybe because, you know, we don't put, uh, you know, the, the flashy bells and whistles on this, uh, but I want it to be as raw as it possibly can to give you guys just a, a firsthand look, an unedited view of what these watches look like on the wrist, um, give you my opinion on it, and hopefully it might help you in, in your journey, uh, either buying these watches, or researching these watches, or just ultimately finding something that uh, that you think you'd want to own. So again, thanks for joining us on this video today. I appreciate you watching it. And we will see you on the next one.